Welcome everybody to the Jamez Report. Today we're going to be covering Monday Night Raw. What happened? We're going to be covering Monday Night Raw Underground, this new thing that's going to be uh, out the mind of Shane McMahon. We're going to be talking about what happened to Montez Ford, what's going on with the hunt business and MVP and his colleagues, and we're going to be talking about Seth Rollins and Dominic and this so-called rivalry that is going on. Who actually won the promo battle between Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton? And Sasha Banks, the new Raw Women's Champion, is now in the middle of a rivalry, a war, to who's going to be facing her at SummerSlam for her Raw Women's Championship. All that coming up here on the GMS Report. So that being said, let me plug my headset in so you get some better view, some better voice quality. You know, a little bit of better voice quality. There we go. How's everybody doing this fine, fine evening? I just finished watching Monday Night Raw. Life keeps you away from get, catching up on things when you want to catch up on things. Some of you know what I'm talking about there. Now, that all being said, Monday Night Raw was not a bad show last night, and I'm not going to keep you waiting any longer on this new edition of Monday Night Raw that you're going to be seeing from here on out for at least for a little while with this Monday Night Raw Underground. Before I get any further, if you like this content, hit the like video, hit the subscribe button so you always get the up-to-date videos as soon as I drop them, you're notified. That way you never miss out on the Jamez Report. Now, that being said, what did you think? And leave in the comments below, what did you think of Monday Night Raw? And what did you think of Monday Night Raw Underground? Do you see this being something that can continue in the future? And I'm not going to keep you waiting on my opinion. My opinion is I like it. I thought it was kind of cool. It's it's a little new. It's new for Monday Night uh, Raw. It's a way to, I think it's a brainchild of Shane McMahon. I'm not 100% sure on that. It has a lot of potential, and I like seeing something that has a lot of potential, especially in these trying times, especially in the time that we're in, that WWE is trying something new with this Monday Night Raw Underground, and if it is handled correctly, and that's the key thing, if it's handled correctly, it can be a very big hit. It will take some time to get some traction, but a very big hit. And what I mean by that is, one, let's get this out of the way. Get the camera work down because the camera work was horrible. And I think about anybody can agree with that. The camera work on Monday Night Raw Underground was not very good at all. It was very hard to follow. It was choppy. It zoomed around too much. Um, but that being said, that's the one negative I think I have to say about the debut of this. What I see them being able to do is you've seen that Eric and Ivo was on now. You've seen that they had some newer talent come in. You've seen that they had Shaman Man bragging up. Uh, these talents, and Shane McMahon was not still on the show uh, for, say, what I think a lot of us was worried about when we found out that Shane McMahon, excuse me, was going to be hosting the show. And what I did like was seeing Ivor, seeing Dolph Ziggler, and later on you'd see MVP come in with Bobby Lashley and Shelton Benjamin. And one thing I do not want to see happen here, I don't want to see this being uh, something that goes on for a couple weeks and then a, an, an invasion happens. No, 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 no. Here's an idea, and I want you guys to hear me out on this. What if they made this into a couple things on Monday night, okay, during the show, during the night, but then what if this was something they put on the WWE Network before Monday Night Raw drops? Or before, well, I mean, or, before, or after Monday Night Raw drops. Because if they did it before, it could be something where Dolph Ziggler gets in a scuffle with somebody else who's not getting that much TV time on Monday Night Raw, but they're able to bring these guys in and work them uh, not on TV time and on the WWE Network, and it sets up something for Monday Night Raw. Or what if something happens on Monday Night Raw where, let's say, Dolph Ziggler again gets in a match and is not settled, but they don't want to make it a big, long storyline for TV, but now Dolph Ziggler gets beat or cheated out on something, or Dolph Ziggler cheats, let's say, Apollo Crews out in a match, and Apollo Crews goes, you know what, Dolph, I want you on Monday Night Raw Underground. And then that way, after Monday Night Raw is over, if you're still up and you still want to see some wrestling, something different like an MMA, MMA uh, WWE version of MMA style, and goes into that. Because this has the feel of uh, Never Back Down, where you have that back 
uh, No Cops Allowed, or Fight Club, or uh, if anyone's ever seen Bloodsport with John claude Van Damme, the Kumite, uh, where no law enforcement is allowed, that uh, they do these things, and they have these underground fights. I like the concept of it. I think, it, and like I said, I think it has a lot of potential. That being said, you know, what do you guys think? Like I said, leave it in the comments below. Let me know what you guys thought of Monday Night Raw Underground. Next up, you know, speaking of MVP, because he would show up with Bobby Lashley and Shelton Benjamin after, after having a horrible, horrible night because what happened to the home business? MVP loses to the returning, yes, I said returning, uh, a, a WWE official uh, United States champion. I mean, personally, I thought MVP was the United States champion. I understood the logic behind that. MVP's my boy. I'm going to tell you that much right up. I know that he's getting a lot of heat, but MVP's my boy out here just rocking at the veteran status with Bobby Lashley and Shelton Benjamin. Uh, so MVP would lose to Apollo Crews. Then Shelton Benjamin would go on to lose his 24-7 championship to, uh, or to, uh, Akira Tozawa after he pinned or truth in the middle of the ring. So something Benjamin didn't get pinned, but or truth did. And I guess the 24 champion 24 7 championship is never going to have that value that I was hoping that it would get with Shelton Benjamin. Um, look, the 24 7 championship is great, it is a good comedy relief, I guess. But me personally, I want to see this thing have some prestige behind it. I want to see people actually want to have this championship, people like Dolph Ziggler. Is it going to be on the same level as the United States Championship or the Intercontinental title? No. I'm not saying it needs to be. And I'm not saying it needs to get completely out of the comedy act. But what I am saying is, you know, give us some prestige. Make it worth something. I believe when Shelton Benjamin had it, I believe that title was worth something. Same when Elias had it back in the day. It kind of had this feel like, oh my goodness, we're actually going to get some good storylines out of this. But they keep handing it to people like Tozawa and or Truth. And that's not taking a shot at them as a performer. It's just taking a shot at the character of being this comedy relief. I'm tired of seeing Tozawa and or Truth back and forth with this title. Let someone else get a chance with it. it I thought Shelton Benjamin having it was great. It gave Shelton Benjamin something to do. Now... Speaking of these guys, thinking of these three men, they go to Raw Underground after hearing about it. And they completely destroy the set and say, look, it's under new management. This could be good or this could be bad. I don't want to see mayhem every single time I tune in to Monday Night Raw. Well, you're seeing Bobby Lashley, MVP, and Shelton Benjamin go around and beat up these people in the audience that's watching uh, in the crowd. I like this concept of, like I said, I, it has a lot of potential. I like this is good for Bobby Lashley. This is good for Shelton Benjamin. This is good for MVP kind of having this club. He could have the MVP lounge be held in Monday Night Raw Underground. These are all things that could happen that I think is really good. It's really good. Um, give us some time to catch some traction. Don't judge and don't hate on it right away. Give us some time. I've seen some negative comments online. Give us some time. Change is good. Nothing. When something's new, you got to give it a chance to prove itself. You got to give it a chance to show you. Show, let WWE show you what they can do. Just like in AEW with this women's tag team tournament, it's a little iffy. It's a lot of potential. But I digress. This has a lot of potential. Moving on, Drew McIntyre, who got RKO'd by Mandy Orton last week. If you guys don't know, Mandy Orton and Drew McIntyre will be facing each other at SummerSlam for the for the WWE World Heavyweight title. Drew McIntyre comes out, cuts his promo. It's a little weak. It wasn't a normal Drew McIntyre promo. He goes out to Mandy Orton saying Mandy Orton has been handed everything. Mandy Orton wouldn't come out and say, you have my respect. Why do you come at me uh, saying I've been handed everything? Drew McIntyre also said that, you know, he was fired and Randy Orton should have been fired for a long time ago. Anyone who knows Randy Orton's history and Randy Orton, if you've listened to him here recently, he talks about his history and his past. And yes, he should have been fired. Yes, he was not mature enough to be world heavyweight champion when he became the uh, youngest world heavyweight champion of all time. He wasn't mature enough. I think this rivalry is going to steal the show at SummerSlam. What I've been seeing, 
the passion that Drew McIntyre has, the veteran skills in this legend killer persona that Randy Orton has taken back up has gained a lot of potential. It's gained a lot of potential. And I'm really looking forward to see what they're going to be able to do in the ring when these two, fi two finally face off. Ric Flair did all was also by Randy Orton's side for the first time in two weeks, which was awesome to see. Um, Ric Flair adds something to the storyline. I'm not sure what it is yet, but it will add something later on down the line. I know people are saying, well, Ric Flair shouldn't be there. Ric Flair, she needs to go away. Ric Flair shouldn't be there with this coronavirus going on. Listen, Ric Flair has Vince McMahon's back. So if Vince McMahon says, I need you there, just like the Big Show, just like The Undertaker has always been, just like a lot of veterans, when Vic, Vince McMahon says, hey, look, I really need you, he's going to show up and he's going to be there for the business because he loves the business and he loves what he does. Pure and simple. You can't knock a man for loving what he does. As long as he doesn't get in the ring and wrestle, I don't care if Ric Flair's there. Do I think he needs to wrestle a match? Absolutely not. Just like Hogan. I don't think Hulk Hogan needs to return and have one more match that he's been talking about. So let Ric Flair be, though. Let Ric Flair be in Randy Orton's corner. If he can still take a bump, let him take a or KO. Let him get punted in the head. Something like that, because I really believe that Randy Orton will turn on Ric Flair uh, here in the near future. But this promo, Randy Orton comes out and cuts this awesome promo like he's been doing. So much passion. So much belief. Same with Drew McIntyre. But when Drew McIntyre picks up the mic, Randy Orton asks him one question to set up this return that he was saying that Drew, that Randy Orton agreed with Drew. But he said, instead of having all these other WWE Hall of Famers and legends opinions and quoting them, why don't you give me your opinion? And Drew McIntyre go on to say that he thinks that Randy Orton is a selfish prick who has done nothing for the younger guys in the locker room, who does nothing for anybody except for Randy Orton. Wasn't that great until he got real truthful and passionate saying, you know what, I'm, I got a lot of checks that need to be, uh, receipts that need to be cashed on you, and I'm going to cash them in at SummerSlam for what you've done to people in the past, for putting them in the head, for all the RKOs, for all the selfish stuff that you did. And I can't, I can't quote word for word what Drew McIntyre said. If you haven't seen it, watch it. If you have watched it, go back and watch it. These two have been cutting the best promos in WWE for quite some time now. Even before the pandemic. I would say Drew McIntyre has been doing it a little bit longer. But since Randy Orton's picked up this legend killer persona again, his promos have been off the chart and has been believable. And I've really been following. Ever since Edge came back, I should say, Randy Orton's promos have been fire. They've been passionate. You really believe what he's saying. And it's really, in a way, for someone who can't be hated because he's had that legendary status where you liked him, whether he's a heel or not. I still like Randy Orton. I still respect Randy Orton. But it makes me want to see Drew McIntyre, Clay Moore, Randy Orton's face, clear off his freaking head. I think it's been working great. But if you're going to ask me what my opinion of Randy Orton is, and I want to know your opinion of Randy Orton. So leave in your comments below, what is your opinion of Randy Orton? My opinion is, Randy Orton is the most underrated and outshined ruthless, ruthless aggression era guy in WWE, who's finally getting the chance to outshine other people. And what I mean by that is, Randy Orton got outshined by Triple H, Batista, not so much Ric Flair, but I say Ric Flair. He got outshined by John Cena. He got outshined by Shawn Michaels. The Undertaker was still there, hot and heavy. So all these guys were still there. So Randy Orton, yes, he, he did have the respect, but he doesn't get the respect that he deserved from back in the day. He's a veteran from the Ruthless Aggression era. He should get that respect. He should get that uh, uh, honor. And I think he's just now finally getting it because he's the only guy left. Edge is hunt. And Edge ain't going to be there full time. So he's the only guy left. Triple H has went on to do uh, backstage stuff. NXT, Shawn Michaels, the same thing. He's the guy left. The Big Show's going on doing Netflix, and he pretty much got taken out for a long time by Randy Orton. Undertaker's retired. He's the only guy left from the Ruthless Aggression era, really, that is there full time. And now he's getting his moment to shine some more. So I wouldn't be surprised if Randy Orton goes into SummerSlam and comes out your new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. But I digress yet again. 
And by the way, it's starting to rain right here where I'm at underneath this tree. So y'all better appreciate these videos. You better hit the like and you better hit that subscribe button is all I'm saying. I'm out here putting in the work, suffering for y'all. I'm, I'm out here getting wet out here. I could catch a cold or something like that. And then I'm going to get tested for the corona. You don't want that on your boy. Don't wish that on me. Speaking of not wishing bad things on people, Montez Ford, during the Dawkins uh, bout with Angel Garza, Montez would uh, actually pass out and collapse on ringside, which would cost uh, Angelo Dawson the win, which would cost him the victory. So then Montez Ford had to wrestle right behind him, and he was starting to look like he was coming alive, but then he'd be taken out. Because he fainted and passed out, so he wouldn't get taken out. So the referee would call the match. They would come to find out that later on in the segment that he was poisoned. Uh, who poisoned him? Well, it's kind of obvious who poisoned him. I think we're going to be surprised uh, who actually poisoned. It's going to look like Angel Andrade and Angel Garza did it, but I don't believe it was actually them. I believe it's this new group that came along, which you'd seen them catch a generator on fire earlier that night. It's about four or five guys, the smaller guys. So I look for them to be cruiserweight division uh, guys. I don't know how this table is going to work out. We don't know very much about them. They, uh, they barely was uh, on the show at all. Now, Seth Rollins and Dominic. You really didn't see Seth Rollins till the very end. Dominic would have an interview saying he wants revenge for his dad. Of course he does. Seth Rollins would come out towards the end of Monday Night Raw. And he would say, you know what, you don't really want this match. But he would, he would attack Tom Phillips and say, you know, Tom Phillips, you were cheering on Dominic as he whooped me with the kendo stick and Murphy last week with the kendo stick. You would whoop, you would cheer him on. And he wanted Tom Phillips to have his eye taken out. Like I said, I'm getting drenched out here. So better appreciate my videos. But... Samoa Joe would stand up and defend Tom Phillips. Samoa Joe would then go lead into the commercial break because Seth Rollins would say, you don't want this, Joe. You don't want this. He would get back in the ring when Samoa Joe says, oh, no, I do want this. And they come back from a commercial break. Both of them holding steel chairs. Dominic would come in behind, smack Seth Rollins in the back of the head, start beating the crap out of Betty Murphy. He held his own. He took him out. They retreat up the ramp. I was all good up to this point. Samoa Joe sat down and let Dominic have at it. Why didn't Samoa Joe get involved? I have no idea. Here's what I don't understand. Here's what I don't agree with. It's going to be, as of right now, it's a singles match between Dominic and Seth Rollins. This is a lose-lose, ladies and gentlemen. I don't see how this works in the benefit of either superstar. Because it's either going to go one way or the other. If Dominic beats Seth Rollins... This is Dominic's first match. He's had really no, he's had this build up going. He's young, he's green. He should not. It makes absolutely no sense to have him beat Seth Rollins. It absolutely makes no sense at all to have him beat Seth Rollins. It makes no sense to have Seth Rollins beat Dominic. In a believable competitive match. If you're looking at it from a logistic uh, and a storyline perception, it makes absolutely no sense to have him beat Seth Rollins. Or Seth Rollins struggle to beat Dominic at SummerSlam. Here's my suggestion to fix this. Buddy Murphy... Seth Rollins versus Dominic Samoa Joe at SummerSlam. Let it happen. Make it happen. To me, that makes logical sense. That would be the right thing to do. Otherwise, I'm not going to be into this match. I'm going to watch it. But uh, there's no logic sense behind it other than Dominic's going to, to get revenge for his dad. And if, and if they're going to do it, they might as well make it a street fight. I think that's another way, another direction they could go. That way Samoa Joe or Kevin Owens or somebody can get involved. Rey Mysterio does not need to be seen. His eye's out. He needs to be disappeared for quite some time. Pure and simple. He needs to be gone. He does not need to show up at SummerSlam and save his son. It makes actually, yeah, that would make another thing that would make no sense. 
But what do you guys think about that? Do you like this Seth Rollins versus Dominic in a one-on-one match? Or do you have another suggestion maybe I didn't think of that you could see happening for SummerSlam between these two? Let me know in the comments below. Don't be afraid to tell me what you guys think. I have no problem telling you what I think. Don't be afraid to come at, come at your boy with some ideas. Now, speaking of ideas, speaking of things I don't necessarily agree with, last night, Sasha Banks, Bailey, would play a video about, you know, well, the glorious uh, tag team, these glorious women division role models, only to be interrupted by Shayna Baszler backstage. Baszler would, would strike Sasha Banks. They're kind of pushing this somewhat babyface Shayna Baszler. At least I think they are. Uh, Oscar would then have an interview later on in the match talk about how Kyrie Sane is okay, but she wants her revenge for Kyrie Sane. Baszler and Sasha would have a match later on that night. It wasn't no bone burner by any means. It was slow paced. And uh, you guessed it, Bailey would get involved, causing an interfer- causing a disqualification. They would be jumping there. Oscar would come out and save Baszler. Here's where I get here's where I get off the bus. Here's where I'm like, you know what? I don't like this idea. Oscar then says she wants a raw women's championship match against Sasha Banks at SummerSlam for her title. Baszler steps in the ring and says, you know what? I'll be cheering for you. So when you win it, I'm going to dismantle you. So she still has this heelish intention, this heelish persona, but they're trying to make her somewhat like a likable ba- healer. I don't understand it. If you're a heel, you're a heel. I don't believe you should be likable. Maybe that's just the old school blood in me. Sasha would then return saying, if you beat Bailey, volunteer Bailey next week on Monday Night Raw, then you get your title shot at SummerSlam. Hear me out on this. I don't want to see Oscar versus Sasha at SummerSlam. I actually, after seeing the interaction with Baszler and Sasha, I want to see Baszler and Sasha at SummerSlam, Oscar and Bailey at SummerSlam. Why? Because Bailey is the reason that Kerry Sane is written off the show. That's the written version. That's why, and Oscar has a reason to go against Bailey. Oscar has a reason to hurt. Bailey. Take the title off of Bailey, then you get transferred over to SmackDown. The SmackDown division needs some new women severely right now, in my personal opinion. Baszler versus Sasha. Baszler doesn't have to win. Yes, I've said in the past that I don't want to see Baszler getting thrown into a championship match, but that's when Oscar had the title. It makes sense to have Baszler go against Sasha. If you're going to make Baszler somewhat of a likable he- uh, face or a heel or whatever you're trying to do with her, if you make her face, it makes sense to have a go against Sasha. She doesn't have to beat Sasha Banks. She can lose to Sasha Banks. Nia Jax is suspended, by the way, storyline purposes only, to get her out of the way. And you know she's going to come back and come for that title. So why not? And they already have beef, Sasha. I mean, not Sasha, but uh, Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax. So why not let, if you do let Baszler win, bam, Nia Jax versus Shayna Baszler. There's your next storyline, folks. I'm doing your job for you. It's that easy. It's that easy. Oh, say it ain't so. But why not go that route? Why not have Oscar go against Bailey? Bailey's ran through the SmackDown division. Who's left in the SmackDown division for Bailey to go against? Honestly. Nikki Cross again? I don't want to see that. We've had two matches with them for the championship. Nikki Cross couldn't get it done. Move on to the next, but who's next? Why not put Oscar there? Uh, heck, Sasha and Bailey's going to Monday Night Raw every night, every week. Let Oscar go to the SmackDown. That's just my opinion, though. That's just my thoughts. That all being said, well, I'm coming to the end of my thoughts and my show. Thank you all for tuning in. If you like this video, hit the like, hit the subscribe. Any opinions you have, maybe you have different ideas for Seth Rollins. Maybe you have different ideas for the Sasha and Oscar rivalry. Maybe you have different ideas for Monday Night Raw Underground. Put it all in the comments below. Who do you think poisoned Montez Ford Cup? Put it in the comments. Promise you I will read them. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And see you Thursday for the next Jamez Report show.